Alright, so um, hi everyone, or yeah, hello. We're going to go into lesson three now of um, Japanese in film contexts. And um, we're going to do when Marnie was there. And just put a brief introduction to some of the things that we're going to cover. We're going to go through the particles we learnt last week. Ha, wa, ga, o, ni, e. Um, so back into reviewing conjugation with verbs, looking at some of the question words and doing, looking at some of the kanji and stuff as well. Adjectives, a debt particle, more vocabulary, some polite phrases as well, and so on. So there's there's quite a few things to go through. Um, so if we are like pretty much recapping, um, recapping the not particle first of all. So this is like you've got watashi, you got yume, and you got naka. So all of these are joined by no, which makes the whole thing into one noun. So watashi no, yume no, naka ni. Um, you got the vocabulary at the side. So I no, dream no, inside ni. Um, we're using ni here again as particle to say we're located in something. So we're located inside my dream. Um, dete kita ko ni sokuri. So this is a this is a, a sentence that's used in the um, film. Um, I haven't got the dialogue for this particular sentence, but we've got in my dreams, you're the girl. Deru means to come out, so it's the almost this girl or this ko, which can refer to boy and girl. You're the person I saw in my dream. Sokuri means like your perfect representation or you look exactly or you sound exactly like something so um, you can use that to make a comparison to something that seems exactly like something else um, we covered that in that case it was Anna's dream Anna's the character the main character in this film that we're going to look over um, not can also be used in a sense. So when we're using questions, I think we mentioned it last week when we're talking about questions. You can use not at the end of a sentence. Um, say, for example, um, you could say something like, "Is that my cat?" Watashi no neko no. And it sounds a bit more feminine, like cutie. Or it can just be used at the end of a sentence as a general sentence, not to sound like really feminine. Um, if we continue with recap. So, Iga yume janai wa. So, then the other girl responds, yume janai wa. And um, if you know what ja janai is from last week, um, maybe you do. Um, yeah, if you know it, you can just type it and then. Hopefully, and we're going to review it. Um, it is not a dream, yeah. Janai is um, like the negative version of this. Hey, it was in the dream. So, are you, what does it on the line particle mean? Okay. It's not necessarily a meaning behind it, but wa at the end of a sentence can sound quite feminine. Um, it's usually used by females, but it can be used by males as well. Um, but it, it does have a feminine nuance to it. Um, totemo ii ko datta. So what does this mean? Totemo ii ko datta. Yeah, almost. It was good and then you got this kanji here which we just did in the previous sentence in the last slide, if you remember this kanji. Um, if not, that's cool. Um, we have the answer, what does it, okay. <laughs> what does this sentence mean? Um, oh, shoot, you're going to type <laughs> I wasn't sure if you're typing or not. I shouldn't have more patience. Um, 
totem or uh i mean it can be totem or and totem or um either one is correct it's tot here is totem or we could be totem or um, i guess totem or has a bit of a stronger nuance but they totem or totem or totem or is like very very means very so totemo ii totemo ii ko datta so that totemo ii is like very good and ko is um like young person child or um a boy or a girl the totemo ii ko datta which would mean like she's a great girl or a great kid or a really very good kid um, so you can use totemo to kind of enhance saying like something's very something. Um, you can also use um, sugoi, sugoi, which is um, quite used a lot in anime. Sugoi desu ne, sore, sugoi. And you could be like, sugoku ii ko datta, sugoku ii, which is a bit more informal, but sugoku means very as well in that context. So, oh, that would have made sense. I didn't know the vocabulary came last. <laughs> it's so, all right, cool. So I think just a bit more recapping. Yeah, mani, doshite watashi o itte te shimatta no, o itte itte shimatta no. Doshite watashi o itte shimatta. Yeah. So it's like, how could you leave me behind? So doshite is why, or in that case, how. Um, oite te comes from the verb oku in present progressive. This is this is present progressive. And then shimatta no question mark. Um, in terms of vocabulary, in terms of grammar, there's a bit going on here, um, and will I will explain it in detail in the further lesson. But I might just explain it now as well. Um, this is like. I wonder if the vocabulary is at the end of this as well. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you got oku, which is that here. Oku, oku, which um, conjugates as oite, ite shimatta. Doushite watashi o uragitta no. Anata wa itsu ka koko ni iru no. Are wa nan desu ka? Um, so we've got the doshite here, why, um, we've got the itsuka, which is like how long, um, and again we've got this ni iru, koko ni iru, which is saying here, located, how long have located you, so you, how long, you wa itsuka, how long, koko ni iru, here, located, and are wa nan desu ka? Uh, what is that? Uh, yeah, so this here, I'll quickly, briefly go over, go over it. So basically, when you're conjugating verbs into a progressive form, which is where basically progressive form suggests that you're doing an action now, and then you were doing that same action before as well. So if you've been working, for example, if you're working. Um, a job, then that's suggesting you're you're working in a job now, and you're um you were working in the job in the past as well. Um, so the w job for working, the wor word for working is hataraku. Um, so that has ku at the end. So to conjugate into present progressive, every time a verb has ku at the end, it would change to i. So hataraku becomes hatarai de. Teiru, hatarai teiru, and that's how it's pronounced. Hatarai teiru. This is oku. This ku becomes i. You got oi teiru. Oi teite is um just an extension of teiru. Oi teite shimatta. Um, and then just basically, simply shimatta is basically saying. An action has happened, um, and it's kind of done. It's not past, but it's saying something's done and it's completed, a completed action. 
Um, I will use some more examples of this in the future to make it more clearer, but it's saying that, how could you leave me behind? Um, that Shimata is saying, the action is done. You did the action of leaving me behind um, in the past. And so, yeah. We got the air particle, okay, which we went through. I've got a few more examples here which might help. Um, I know. Right, so, okay, I'm going to wait. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So the et is used for vague situations in all these examples. So when we were talking about et last week, um, do you remember what et was used for? Yeah. Yeah, there's a going in a direction or towards a place not specifically yet. Um, so if you look at the first sentence, for example. So we've got more e ikimashō. So we go in. Let's more skoshi means a little bit. So ikimashō, we've got iku, which is to go. So you want to go towards a little bit closer. She wants to get a closer look. In this case, she's looking out onto the garden at the back of her house. So she wants to get a little bit closer, but not specifically go into a place, just going a bit closer. Again, here. Again, mani wa suki na tokoro e. So suki na tokoro, um, which is here, a place that you like, iku. So we're going towards a place that you want to go to, but it's not very specific what the place is, um, but we're going to head towards that place that you want to go. Um, so again here. Which is saying, we've got doko, which is where, um, itta from iku, which is like the past of iku, itta, which is went, um, to motta, which is to think. So we've got where you go, I thought. So in this case, it's like, I was wondering where you'd gone. Um, doko e itta no ka to omotta. So okay, that doko e is a very vague place, very vague location. Um, also another thing, which is probably a bit of grammar for you here. Doko e itta no ka. When you um, are using questions in an, as an embedded sentence, as in, I was wondering where you had gone, um, you would always use um, the ka. So you always use the particle ka. In this case, doko e itta no would be the sentence. But if you're saying, I was wondering where you went, then you would use the ka, doko e itta ka to omotta. So, doko e itta no ka to omotta. So, we're using the no ka um, always when we're using it, um, a question in an embedded sentence. So, that's just an important point to know. So, if it's saying, I was wondering where you've gone, or I was, was wondering what you thought about this, or so on, then you would use that no ka in the question when you're um, going to say, a sentence with a question mark. Um, again, we've got here. So, kite, it's um, instead of kochi nikite, it seems a bit more gentle. So, just come, come to this side. Kochi ekite. So come, um, kite, kite, which is coming from the verb kuru, which means to come. Um, so kochi e kite, come to this side. And again here. Nikai <coughs> e. So as you can see, nikai is second floor, um, ikai is first floor. Um, they're going to second floor, so we're heading towards the second floor, and then she's pointing up. So they're not. The destination is not necessarily the second floor. They're going to the girl's room, but 
that Nikaya is just saying we're, we're going up, we're going up to the second floor. Um, so when we're talking about Nikkei, we're we're going to encounter a little topic called counters, and um, there are so many counters in Japanese that it's it's hard to remember them all, and at first, but they're all used for different situations. So just introducing some of the counters that you can come across. We got futari. So if we're looking at two, um, the um, number two, and we're looking at the different can different counters that we use for the number two. So if we're going to say two people or a couple, we've got futari. Um, we've got two things, it's futatsu. Um, we've got two days, it's futsuka. Um, two floors, just as what we did, the two floors or the second floor, that should be, instead of two floors, that's the second floor. Nikkei. Or two things, as in small objects. Um, niko. And there's um, a lot of different counters as well on top of that. Now, as you can see, they have different readings because um, with kanji, there's always a kunyomi and onyomi. And um, these these three examples are using the kunyomi reading of the number two. Um, in this case, it changes the whole of the, the hiragana for both of the kanji. So even though we've got futari, this kanji here will be read as jin as an onyomi or hito as kunyomi however when it's used in this case which is a special case it becomes futari same with one person which is hitori um, one person again here we've got futa same um, same um, kunyomi futatsu futatsu and then the Hiragana tsu to say two things. Um, we've got futsuka. Again, we've got a different kunyomi reading here. Futsuka and that ka is used for um, the the, hiraga, um, the kunyomi for day. So, for example, we have mikka, which is um, three days. We have yokka, which is like fourth day. Um, and we have so on itsuka which is five day muika which is six day so it's it um it goes up um like that and we have different readings depending on what day we're talking about now that might seem a lot because you read that as neat usually um and you don't really read that as this as any other reading unless you're using it with a counter but because these counters are so common it's often that you'll come across it as we will come across this counter in the sentence um, further on into the lesson. But for now, you can remember these um, counters Hitori, Futori, Sanin, and Ichinichi, Futsuka, Mika. So those two are probably more important because you can say Hitori also means one person, but it can also mean to be alone. Um, hitori means um, alone. So, and again, Futori can mean two people. But it can also mean couple as well, so it's got two different meanings. Um, so yeah, we've got knee particle. Um, just a little bit of a grammar introduction. Um, just like we did earlier, there was the watashi no yume no naka ni, and this is a grammar point that suggests um, location of something. So here we got naka which is this kanji, which is inside. We got ue, above. So we can locate something as well. So we could say, um, sukue no ue ni neko ga imasu, which you could say a cat is above the table. So instead of saying no naka ni, we'd say no ue ni, um, or um, beto no ue ni, uh, fuku ga arimasu, that was closed on the bed. Again, shita, which is below. Um, so you can also re replace all these different words, mae, um, in the middle here to say that um, something is in front of something or something is to the side of something. And we also have what we do is before the not ni, we always have the noun that we're describing. So if we're describing a room, which is in this case, we always have the room at the front, heya no naka ni. Neko ga arimas. Gaimas. <laughs> no, neko gaimas. Not arimas. Gaimas. 
Sirimasen. So Hea is the noun, and we've got no nakani, which is describing the noun. And um, okay, so we can use that to describe the location of something in a bit more detail. Um, yeah. So in this example, we have. Okay, so nakani. So the nakani here, we don't have the no nakani because it's clear that we're referring to the kaban, um, ana chan no kaban, which is Anna's bag, ana chan no kaban omotekimashita. So kaban no nakani no to haitemasu. So that would be saying in the bag is her notebook. No to. Um, just a ga, quick ga review. Um, watashi wa mani no koto ga ichiban suki da yo. So um, we've got the topic, we've got the subject. Um, but we've got this overall sentence is ga suki. Um, so we're using the ga suki, but instead we've got a word here. Do you know what this word means? Um, the clue, a clue is here with the kanji description, but do you know what that means? Which kanji? Are uh, this kanji here? Um, this one and this one. So these two make a word. No. Okay. What about if I gave you the meaning of the kanji here? So this one means one, and this one means order or rank. So if this was read as a sentence by itself, I, watashi wa, as for me, the top. This is the topic. The focus, the subject, the suspect is Mani, which is the girl um, here. So, ichiban suki da yo. so the focus is mani, I, mani, like. So this ichiban is one rank. So if we make that into a word, it's um, the best. So it's saying that I like you the most or I like you the best is what she's saying here. So I like you the most. So we're still using a kotoga ski da yo, but we're um, actually adding ichiban to just increase the amount of like we have. And no koto is used after you say like you like somebody. So if it's like a, a confession, it's like um, anata no koto ga suki da yo. Um, you'd use no koto, which is usually used in a confession or using to say you like somebody. Um, so that's used quite often, and you find it a lot in anime. Uh, so, for these sentences, would you put iru ni aru o ga aru? So if I say, if I just read the sentence, anata wa naze kono mura. So, mura is village. Um, naze is uh, why. So, you, anata, why, this village. So, do you know what that translates as, or can you have an idea of what that might translate as? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, it's like. Anata wa naze kono mura. So why do you live there? So why what would that be? Ni aru o ga aru? Uh. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hi hi. Is it no aru? No aru, ni aru, hai. 
um, because we're located again here. Anata no heya wa nikai. Again, nikai, which I'll see if you remember. And then heya, which we did mention them. Heya no naka ni neko ga. And then I put arimas, but it's meant to be imas. So, what do you think this sentence could be based on the words that we've just come across? Yeah, okay, yep. Um, mm, not quite. It would be ni aru again because anata no hea that's saying your room so this would be like if you had garu it'd be like your room has a second floor which would be a pretty impressive room <laughs> so ni aru is saying we're located um on it's located on the second floor so um yeah so if we just continue um, the next part monai um so as we did last week we had nani monai which means nothing so if we we're going to put this into a sentence like this it's like um watashi mo nani mo so we got the nani mo Nai, which has been conjugated here into nakunatta, but we've got nani mo shinjirare nai. So, what we have here is that um, the nai has been added to the shinjiru. Shinjiru means to believe, so shinjirare nai will be to not believe. Um, so, nani mo shinjirare nakatta is like a dog know what to believe shinjirare nakunatta so we've got nani mo shinjirare nai um, again nani mo to say nothing and um, here we've also got dare mo sundei nai yo ni meemashita so we've got dare mo sundei nai if we just look at that part of the sentence again dare mo nai means um, no one so nani mo nai means nothing and dare mo nai means no one because dare means who dare mo nai means no one um, and sundeiru this is the verb sumu means to live but we've conjugated into present progressive um, how we conjugate that just comment if you want to know how to conjugate that and I can talk about it but we will go over it into a, a later lesson um, but if you want me to mention it now, we can. But um, sundeiru is um, important when you're saying um, you're located somewhere. Because if you're using a present progressive with um, sumu, sundeiru, it's saying that you lived there in the past and you're living there now. Where if you said sumu by itself, like um, for example, um, nihon ni sumu, so I'm going to live in Japan then it would be kind of like saying you're going to live in Japan rather than you currently live in Japan so saying um, Nihon ni sunde imasu would be saying I live in Japan and I've been living in Japan um, the reason of because of this is because Japanese doesn't have a future tense so the present tense can sometimes be used as a future tense and so that's something to look out for. Usually the plain tense such as sumu or mieru can also be used for future um, situations. Um, yeah, okay, we can do it later then, no problem. Um, so we've got, um, so you can have a try. You can say a location and a country, like, I don't know, the country that you're based in, and then you put ni sundeimasu. Um, so you can have a go at that and um, you always say again um, when you're saying you live somewhere you always use a ni particle the same reason why you say ni iru ni sundeiru because you live in that location so give it a go in the comments see if you can comment like where you live and then say ni sundeimasu and um, that's basically how you can say oh I live here um, 
Here we got this. Um, if we look at further on in the sentence, you can see that sundeiru becomes sundei nai. So again, dare mo inai. Um, we've got um, sundei inai. So that the inai has become part of the sundeiru. So sundeiru has become negative, a negative verb. So sundei nai. Uh, remember, nani mo nai, dare mo inai, because inai is referring to um, iru, which means a living thing. Nai is just meaning um, a non living thing. So, um, inaria ni sundeimasu. Oh, itaria. So it's just a different here, different katakana with the second katakana that you put. Ita. Um, Italia. So you've used na. Yeah. Uh, so then you got the yoni me mashta. So this sentence is basically saying, um, it seemed like no one was there. So it's talking about a location in the house. Yeah, that's it, Italia. It's talking about a location in the house. She went to see this house and it seemed like there was no one there. So miemashita means mieru, means to appear. So it looks like it appears. Um, which you got miru. Miru is to see. Mieru is to seem or to see or can see. It means can see or appear. So this yoni, um, we won't cover it now, but we'll just say it for the sake of the sentence. So it's like, no one lives here, no one lives here, um, in that way, kind of in that way, like Miyamashita. So it's saying, it, it seems like, it seems like, Yoni Miyamashita is like, it seems like no one is here. So Yoni is just added like, it's in a way that it seems like something isn't here. So Dare mo sundei nai, no one lives here, Yoni Miyamashita, it seems like. No one is living there. Um, and then we got what o recap. So I put all the vocabulary at the bottom with the um, furigami as well. Okay. So if it was um, we got jibun o kaita. So we're saying this is saying the doing action. That's what the o particle is there for. So um, instead of jibun wa kaita, which would say I drew, jibun o kaita is saying that she drew. So really the full sentence would be um, anata wa jibun o kaita moratta no wa hajimete. Oh no, it'd be dare, dare wa. So it's first time someone, um, dare ka, which means someone, dare ka, dare ka wa. So it's the first time someone's drawn me. Um, so we're doing, the action is being done to this oneself, which is jibun. So that's why we've got the op particle, because the drawing is being done to the jibun, which is herself. Um, again here. <laughs> again. The sagashi modotte kita. We got sagasu, we got modoru. Sagasu means to search for, modoru means to return. So sagashi modotte kita. So this, um, the sagashi modotte kita is being done to the thing that is before the o, which is the diary. So we thought, mani wa. Mani ga ni. Yes, a mani wa. It's like this person. I thought Mani Nikio Sagashi Modo Tekita. So Mani searching for diary. Um, so Nikio Sagashi ni Modo Tekita to Motte Tanuni. Again, I didn't include it in the dialogue here, but she says Tomo Tekita, Tomo Tetanoni. So Tomo is used as well. So I thought Tomo. I thought that she was searching for a diary. Um, and then finally, 
今まで育ててくれて感謝しているわ本当の子供でない私を。So this is referring to a, a 両親は。So it's her parents, but it's her adopted parents in this case. 本当の子供でない。So that's saying didn't have a real child.、Um, 私。So,、um, or not their real child, 私。So 両親は本当の子供でない。So, not real child. This is, means real, honto, no. Means real, kodomo, child, denai, not, watashi. So, me who wasn't the real child. So, what you've got here is when you have a verb before a noun or a sentence like this, all this whole sentence is describing the watashi. So, it's saying, I,、um, not their real child. So, the not real child, me. Um, again, if we go back to the wa, ryoshin wa, parents. Honto no kodomo de nai watashi o. So, parents, me wasn't a real child. Ima ma de sodate te kurete. So, ima ma de means until now. Sodatsu, which means to raise. Sodate te, or sodateru actually. Sodateru. Sodate te kurete. To raise, like raise a child or something. Kansha shteiru. So, kansha means grateful. So, we're looking at this main sentence as we're looking at it in two chunks, three chunks here. So, honto no kodomo de nai watashi o.、Um, so, this is one chunk. Not a me who wasn't the real child、um, until now. Ima made sodate te kurete. Until now, raised me up. And then we've got kansha shteiru wa. Kansha shteiru comes from kansha suru, which means you're grateful. In this case, kansha shteiru saying, I am grateful、um, and I was grateful, but I'm still grateful. Again, present progressive form.、Um, but the main thing is this ima made sodate te kurete is marked, is, is preceded by o, which is saying,、um, They raised me. So, if you want to break down the sentence so it's easy to understand, Watashi o sodatete kureta. Sodatete kureta. So, Watashi o sodatete kureta, which would mean they raised me. So, that raising is being done to Watashi. And so far, do you understand? Wakarimashita ka? Eto, choto, choto i pai ga iru to mo. I think there was a lot of <laughs> sense. t a k u s a n g a h a n a s h t e i m a s k e d o I think when I was looking at the dialogue, I was like, oh, this is some nice dialogue. But、um, if I'm going high, that's good if you understand. But if I'm going fast at all, just let, just let me know. I can slow down, I can get Microsoft Paint. <laughs> I can get Microsoft Paint. Because I'm done with Photoshop, paint for the win. I'll get Microsoft Paint and we I can just like kind of explain things and break things down a bit more. So just let me know if there's anything that you want to go over.、Um, ah, here's something that's a bit less、um, on the brain. Okay. Um, so, again, we've got this odoranai, which comes from odoru. Now, again, I just、um, put this here so we can explain. So, odoru, we've got the ru at the end, and we want to make it into a negative. We're just going to the ra column, which is this, the negative column, and we've got odora. Then add nai, which means not, and then we have odora nai. That's pretty simple. Again, if we want to say odori ma sho or odori mas, which is the polite way of saying, odori ma sho is polite say, way of saying let's dance. So we can just go to odoru, go to the ri col column here, odori, and then add mas, odori mas. 
um, if you want to say let's dance odori masho if you want to say that in um, a more informal way odoro odoro um, then to say let's dance in a more informal way we got the root column we just go to ro add u the hiragana o u u so odoro odoro u odoro now would be let's dance so simple way of conjugating verbs and um, yeah we go to some more verb conjugation so imakara iko so ashita is saying um, no tomorrow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. imakara right now iko Again, iku is a verb. We can just go, whoa, iku, and go to ko column, add the u hiragana at the end, iko. Again, iko. Iko. Um, what do you think this means? So, you got this is this verb to say. You dare ni means to someone. So, what do you think the sentence means based on the verb conjugation here? You can have a guess. I'm not sure. Mosh mosh, iru no kai. So here. <laughs> Sorry, if if you don't know, that's fine. I was I'm just I'm just wondering. Iru no kai, hi. So so yeah. Um, negative plus mo hi, hi hi so that's it. Yeah. Um, so no one. So that's no one. Dare mo nai. Dare ni mo nai. Um, what about this here? Um, which is from this verb to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Or, um, that's... Okay, yeah. So, I won't tell anyone. Or in this case, because we haven't got the, um, the topic, the, um, the wa. So, it could be watashi wa dare ni mo iwanai de yo. But, um, here it's anata wa dare ni mo iwanai de yo. So, yeah. So, don't tell anyone. Um, so it's like from this from this point forward so don't tell anyone again with the conjugation for you you to say we've got the you um, hiragana which is uh, here and we want to go up to the negative column here the ah but wait what we've got is that we've got wa but it says ah so the exception when you get to negative verbs that have like just a u at the end and you want to make it negative you just change in the a to wa instead so you're just changing it to wa so that u goes to wa so it becomes not ianai but iwanai um it's the same with the verb skal which means um to use um you wouldn't say Ska night would say skawa night skawa night to like don't use um here's just some sentences as well <laughs> 
So we got Futochabuta. Um, so this Anna chan called the girl Futochabuta, which is quite quite rude. Um, Futo means fat and buta means pig, so that's pretty obvious. Not very nice. Um, but um, we've got the conjugation for e, which we did last week as well, which becomes we've got e yoi yoi, which is um, what we change it to when we want to conjugate into past or negative. Yoku nakata, which is nakata wasn't good. Yoku nai isn't good. Yoku nakata wasn't good. Yokata. Yokata. <laughs> so this literally means was good, but it can also mean ah, oh, I'm glad, I'm relieved. Ah, oh, yokata. Okay, now we'll move into quickly the debt particle. So here's a sentence. Gakkoude. So at school. Koritsu means all alone. Koritsu shiteirun desu. Again, shiteirun, shiteru, shiteru, which means um, this is a present progressive form. Koritsu means all alone. So, gakko de koritsu shiterun desu means um, at school she's all alone or that person is all alone. Um, you could just say, ana wa ana chan wa gakko de koritsu shiterun desu. So that particle is used after a location to describe an action that happens at the location. So the reason we can't say ni here is because this is an action, this is a state of doing something. So the dialogue suggests she's literally doing loneliness because shiteiru comes from suru, which means to do. So if you were going to say, for example, you're in your room, you could say, you would say heia ni iru or heia ni iru. But if you um, are, um, I don't know, you're playing your piano in your room like I was doing this earlier. It could be heya de piano o hiteimasu. So I'm playing piano in my room. So now that that's the difference between de and ni. De is the action is done at the location. Ni is just saying that you are at the location, you are located there. Um, so that's the difference between de and ni. Um, let's just go through some vocabulary. Again, we've got やっぱり, which means as expected. Or, so that's that's a how she, Anna, Anna Chan goes to where she says, Ah, daddy mo sunde inai yo ni moshita. Ah, it's here. やっぱり, ah, as a thought. Ah, やっぱり, ah, there's no one there. Um, again. ねえ、やっぱりあなたでしょ. So. Desho is like right, right, right. So it's like yapari as I thought. Anata desho, it's you, right, right. So yapari is like you can see the smoke look on the face when she's coming in. Yapari anata desho. She's saying I thought it was you. Um, context: She's got Marnie's uh, Nikki diary and she's reading it, and this girl thinks that Anna Chan is Mani. Because you're reading this book very intently, the diary that she has in her hand. Yeah. <laughs> so Muri is saying, no way, impossible. No, 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 there's no way. It's another way of saying no, but it's kind of very strong. It's like, Muri, Muri, I can't do that. There's no way I can do that. That's a, what it means. Impossible. And Zetai is. Um, a way of um, e e like expressing even more a negative thing. Um, so you can zetai ni dame da yo. It's like there's no way. It's just no way that it's just just bad. Or um, uh, I don't know. Zetai ni tabe na yo. Zetai ni tabe na yo. I'm not eating that. There's no way I'm eating that. Or something like that. Okay. Um, we got here. We we'll go to this one. Okay, so aikawarazu is. Oh, I didn't put it as a vocab. Oh, what was I saying? <laughs> aikawarazu. Oh, it did here, sorry. As hiragana. Aikawarazu, as usual. So, who's she? Who's she? Aikawarazu shinpai so da ne, 
okara-san, which is like saying okara-san wa aikawarazu shimpai sodan. So as expected, as usual, this is as usual, your mom seems to be worried, which we have the verb shimpai suru, which means to worry. Um, we looked at futsu ni last week, but here we've got something else. Anako. Now, difference between futsu ni, it's an adverb. So, futsu ni, uh, I do this. Or futsu ni, sono koto yaru, I do this or whatever. So, futsu ni, I normally. Whereas, futsu no is saying a normal, and that not is going to be followed by a noun. In this case, it's futsu no kao, which is, as we can, no, it's not here, is it? Oh, I'll show you in a second, because we're, we're going to look at some body parts. Kao means face, so futsu no kao. As you can see, she has a very futsu no kao. Um, so this no is modifying a noun that comes after it. So, um, futsu no nichijo could be like, like a normal, everyday life. It's just normal. Whereas futsu ni is suggesting normally I'm doing this or normally like what we had last week. Okay. Yeah, what well, another vocab. <laughs> what what in that context when you see the video, what do you think she's saying? <laughs> What do you think? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yeah, Hayaku. <laughs> Hurry. Um, did you know that already, actually? Oh, and you've got a senpai role. Omedoto gozaimasu. Hi. Yeah. Um, okay. So we've got a little bit of a dialogue. I'll quickly go through this because there's. Whoa. Quite a lot. Okay, so here, just going to this futari wa futari. So, like we looked at the counters before, so this literally two people will surely do you well, but these two people, futari wa, the topic is focusing on here. So, watashi wa, saying, I can't come with you. But futariwa, the topic is now the two people will kitto yokushite kureru. Um, so we've got um, I topic, these two people, which is referring to um, oiwa san tachi. I can't remember if. Is it their auntie or uncle? I can't remember who it is, but it's a couple. It's an elder couple. Um, so that's who she's staying with. So that's the two Futari people. Futari wa kitto yokushite kureru. Um, they will look after you. Um, we've got iko again. Well, we had totemo iko from before. Iko, good child. Nandemo, everything. Nandemo. So we had nani mo, but nandemo means like everything. Uh, to. Genki ni naru. So genki ni naru would mean to get healthy, but this has been changed to genki ni natte. Genki ni natte, which means be well. Kairu, which means to go back home. So get healthy, come back. Um, what you probably noticed, and we did look at this last week. Well, we didn't, but it was in the futsuni sentences last week. Is you got the iko ni shite. Nandemo yoku tabete, genki ni natte, and kaite rasha. So, what, what do you notice about those sentences? What's a similarity between all these um, those sentences? Yeah, the tet ending, which which explains, which means I should really introduce you to the tet forms, because <laughs> it's so useful. Again, you hear you got kito yoku shite, 
kureru. So yokushite kureru. But here, the te form is used to um, list things. So, iko ni shite, be a good child. Nandemo yoku tabete, eat well. Genki ni, genki ni natte, kaite rashai. Again, you got this te for kaite rashai. Um, watashi wa tsuite <laughs> But, however, you can see the, what the commas here, because in this case, it's breaking up the sentence. If you listen to what she's saying. So you can hear the pauses in the sentence. Um, you know, Whereas here, it's more... More like, As for me, I can't come with you. It's more like, I can't come with you. So this is more of a whole thing. Whereas this is a list. Um, but tech form is really imp quite important. Um, yeah. Okay, here we go. So that's what I was talking about, the cow, the body parts. And when we're using the gut particle, um, usually for most of the time we're using it for um, body parts, we will use the gut particle to describe it. So for example, if you've got atama, which is head, atama ga ii, atama ga ii, which means good head, which means clever. Atama ga ii ne. So that's just a phrase to say it's good, you're clever. Atama ga okashi means like you're insane, you're crazy, you're out of your mind. Okashi means strange. Or atama ga okashi. Now, you could learn ga as, oh, the focus is on the atama. Just suppose it is. But it's, it's also useful, you can just remember these as set phrases and um, usually when you come across body parts and you want to follow it with an adjective, you can just add nga and then the adjective. Again, for example, um, kami, kami, which is hair, nga nagai, kami ga nagai, long hair. So if you're saying, ah, anata wa kami ga nagai ne. Like saying, oh wow, your hair is so long. Um, that's So that's how you'd say it. By the way, I am using anata a lot to say you. But um, I'm only using that for example's sake. Um, in speech, you wouldn't really use anata. Um, even though the characters in this seem to use anata a lot. Probably to describe um, a special relationship. These Mani and Anna have. So they seem to use Anato with each other a lot. But um yeah. Kao ga warui. So Kao ga warui. Face is bad. Um Mega warui. Bad eyesight. Or Meg in this case actually. Mega sameta. Mega sameta, which comes from Mega sameru which means to be um, awake. So when you're asking questions, you don't have to say um, Megasamemashita ka? Or Megasamemasu ka? You don't have to say like the ka at the end. You could just, when you're using informal questions anyway, you can just raise the intonation. Megasameta. Change the intonation if you hear how she says it. Mega Mega sameta. Mega sameta. Ta. And that's like, oh, asking a question. You could respond by saying, Mega sameta. I'm awake. So you can just say the same thing, but change the intonation. And you can use it as a response to the question by saying the same thing. Mega sameta. Ah, hai, mega sameta. Ah, so. No, do you And there's like this dance. Okay, whatever. Um, yeah, so me means I, and if you look at, whoa, body parts, looking at the face, um, we got the kami hair, um, it's almost strange actually, because kami also is the same, is means God, kami, so if it helps to remember, the top of the head, I guess because it's the highest point of the body, it's like God. So Kami is the hair. 
I don't even know if that's useful. <laughs> you got cow, which is obviously the cow, it's the whole face. Um, met, met, which is the eyes. Hana, which is the nose. Um, kuchi, which is the mouth. Interesting thing about kuchi, you can see it looks like a mouth here. You can see met, if you look and you um, look in the middle, you've got three spaces and that middle space could be an eye. So that's how you could see met. Um, atama, which means head, which is what we were just talking about. Mimi, have I guessed where Mimi, what Mimi is? Or maybe you know what Mimi is already. Yeah, e, e, uh, e, uh, hi, hi, Mimi. Uh, so those different parts of the body. Uh, Ninoru. So I'm gonna wait because the videos probably take a while to load. And yeah, Ninoru. Noru is basically the verb to literally to ride. Notte, picnic yo. So she's inviting her to a picnic which you can probably work out what that means um, juice cookie you can probably work out what picnic is um, what she's inviting her so like i said last year you got mite mite to say to see mite mite look notte notte is like come 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 and hop on the boat Noru means to ride. So when we're using noru to say you're riding something, you usually say the transport plus ni plus noru. For example, Sa, kuruma notte. Onboro de moshiakenai keda. Sa, kuruma ni notte. Um, so kuruma ni noru. So means to ride in a car or to literally to be in a car, traveling in a car. Um, so this is an important point. We use a neat particle every time we use a noru. So if you're gonna say densha, uh, say, say if um, I thought I would have put the English, but I haven't. Densha, hikoki, jitensha, kuruma. Do you know these three words, by the way? You comment these. Do you know what these three words mean? Before I say what they mean. I've I've noticed that there's probably a lot of vocabulary that that's coming across. <laughs> um, I hope it's not a lot because <laughs> I realise I put a lot of vocabulary into this um, PowerPoint. So it's like, "ganbatte no," do your best. But um, yeah, car is one of them. Jitensha hai. And bike, um, then shot is train. Um, literally, if we're looking at this, electric is the kanji for electric, electric car, then shot train. He call ki, which is airplane, um, the fly go machine, if you break it up into kanji. Um, fly go machine. You've probably seen this kanji for iku, which means to go. Um, a lot of vocab is good. I hope it is. Um, oh gosh, skip the slide. Um, yeah, I I don't know if you're making a note. Are you making a note of the vocabulary, or you're just um, going along with it? I mean, either way, it's fine. But, um, yeah. What's his name? Um, usually okay. That's cool. And then we just got a phrase to say choshi ni noru or choshi ni notte, which means to get carried away with something. So choshi ni noru basically means to get carried away. So that's just a useful phrase to know in general. Um, so we just have a kanji focus on sha, which you got the onyomi means sha, kunyomi means kuruma. So when we're using the unyom, kunyomi kuruma, it means that we are referring to it usually when this kanji is by itself, like kuruma ni notte. When the kanji is by itself, in this example, we would use the kuruma reading. However, if we're using this kanji with other kanji to make a joyo kanji, 
then we've got den sha and then we're going to use a sha reading because it's connected with another kanji jiten sha literally a self revolving car um <laughs> a bike um chu sha jo which is stationed car place um car park car park chu sha chu sha jo and um see if you can work out this one shako car storehouse so this is like a storehouse this is a car um and that kind of gives you an introduction to how logical kanji is um can be quite a lot of the time kanji can be quite logical so when you um, know one kanji and you know another kanji then you could um it's a good <laughs> if electric car is train what about a real electric car uh is electric car I feel like in Japanese it would literally literally be electric car but however it's not you know what I want to find this out myself. Um, we'll probably have a look afterwards. Electric car. I feel like it's electric car because <laughs> it probably borrows from um, like a katakana. However, I will have a look. Um, it might be something different. Um, I'm just having a look now. Denki jidosha seems to be it, um, which makes sense. Denki. Um, which is electricity, get, which uses this kanji, electric, denki, and we've got ji, do, sha. The ji uses this kanji, and the sha is this kanji. So we've got ji, do, sha, which is um, automobile. It's a long winded way of saying automobile. And we've got denki, which is electric. So it could be denki, ji, do, sha. That's what I've going when they've looked on the internet. However, when I typed in electric car in Google, it also found me the answer. <laughs> so this is how useful katakana is and um, how helpful it is for an English speaker. Um, yeah. Shako is garage. So shako is garage. Car stores. We're going to look at something now which is going to express how we can say where something is something. So it's, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, I'm going to show you basically. We've come across the word in this PowerPoint, and if we're looking from Anna's perspective here, where Anna is in terms of location, we can describe that as koko, koko ni iru. Anna is here, koko. However, if we're talking about these, the Mani's mother, Mani's um, obachan to. Okay, We're talking about soko, which is there. Um, actually, to be honest, it's not soko. I'll explain why in a bit. Asoko, which is more over there, and um, doko is where. So you got this common theme of ko, 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 koko, soko, asoko, or doko. Now, the reason why I said soko is probably not over there, this is probably more ascribed to. Um, well, it could be soko actually, because soko is more, it's close, you know, it's, it's at a distance, but maybe not too much at a distance. Um, as a soko, it probably feels like it's more quite a distance away. Now, um, however, when we're referring to koko and soko um, in general terms, koko is saying here, so um, you could say, yeah, you could just say essentially, koko wa. Uh, so this is the classroom. Um, soko, um, soko wa, so like over there, um, toire ni iru. Um, so over there, the toilet is over there. So we've got this court so um, I probably won't go through this. Well, I might go through this dialogue. Anata wa it's ka koko ni iru no. So this is the question in this scene where Anna's like, how long have you been? Been here for Mani, koko ni iru. Here, which is referring to the ie. <laughs> that was not meant to be a pun. 
Um, koko ni iru no how long have you been here at the ear at the house? Um, watashi wa zutto koko ni. So we're saying here because they're both at the house, so that's the location that they are. Koko is the house. Whereas um, here, if we ju just jump to this, sore wa soto, anoto ko wa doko kashira. So this is what the mom says when she's looking at anoto ko wa doko kashira. Where is the child? Doko where? Um, and here's the dialogue we just looked at. Utsukishi wa ne mo skoshi chikake kimashou ne. So we've just got some other dialogue as well, but you can see how the koko um, links into the sentence. Um, oh, okay, we've got the the vocabulary here. Yoru, um, Shitsuke, and so on. Um, again, if we look in at examples. Chikamichi te koko? Chikamichi means shoko. Literally, the kanji for short, the kanji for road, short road, chikamichi shoko. So she's looking at Chikamichi te koko? She's saying is the shoko here. And then here. Koko, watashi no heya. So this is my room. Koko wa. Referring to the location that they're both at. Koko, here. Um, Dialogue doko, which is like where, where did you go? I was wondering where you went. Koko ii kashira. Oh, hi. Yeah, is this okay here? So here, there, of where, over there, basically. Um, Again, you can do the same with kore, sore, are, dore. You have this here. Demo, kore wa mani no nikki da wa. Again, you got that wa particle, which makes it a bit more feminine in this case. Um, so, kore wa. So, this mani no nikki. Mani's diary, da wa. So, that's the sentence. Kore wa mani no nikki da des. Um, impolite. If we were going to say, this diary is Mani's, Kono Nikki wa Mani no des. Again, we're using this not after Mani to say it belongs to Mani. But the reason why we say Kono Nikki instead of Kore Nikki is because when we're using Kore to more like to, um, to affect a noun, before a noun, it always uses the not. Like how you have the not particle to say, um, for example, Watashi no nu yume no naka ni. It's saying, Kono, this diary, and the not is possession. So this diary, Kono nikki, instead of Kore nikki. Um, again, here, Sono toki wa. Sono toki wa, hora, konna ni jiu. So here, sono toki is at that time, toki, which is time, at that time. Um, it was such a freedom. Konna ni jiyu, freedom means ji, is jiyu. But konna ni is interesting because that's also another cot that we're going to come across as well. Um, but we have some more examples. Kore, so kore is this, sore is that, are is that over there, dore is which, so. Are wa nan desu ka? Hmm? So she's looking at this. This is over there, that object. The are wa nan desu ka? Um, here. Rompo wo kochi nagete! Rope? She's about to throw the rope. Rope wo kochi ni nagete. So this kochi is referring to um, where she is. So she's saying, throw it over here towards me. Kochi means towards um, where you are. So if you if you um, if she's saying kochi, she's saying over here, throw over here. Kochi ni nagete. 
coach ni nadete um, so kochi sochi those are other words sochi would mean like over like there whereas kochi would mean here um, for example, a common phrase in Japanese is like kochirai dozo, kochirai dozo. So if um, you come to a restaurant and the waiter wants to show you to a table, kochirai dozo. So you like come this way, kochirai, to come, come with us, come here, sochi, which means more over there. Um, does that make sense? <laughs> so you got this ko so a do um, pattern. Kore, koko, sore, soko, are, asoko, doko, dore. Um, and they have similar meanings. Cool. Um, again, for example, anata no, I use anata again. I'll lose connection for a few minutes, but I'll be back. Okay. Um, that's cool, that's cool. Um, should I stop? <laughs> I'll stop. I'll wait for. I don't know. I don't know. If, should, should I? Should I? Shall I wait for you then? If you're because I, yeah, I know you're in the call now, so I don't know. Wait. If your connection is um. I'll wait. I'll wait. Just let me know if you want to um, when you when you're ready. I think I'll put an interlude, but still. Piano, hit my show. Hi. Let me know when you're ready and you can move. Um.
Pause this and make sure I remember to have a little pause and I'll continue and then you can eat. Yeah. Okay. Hello again. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Um, actually, it's much easier because. Um, since since there's no one else there as well, it means that you don't have to miss anything. So that's cool. Um, so we're gonna move into the next one. Um, we're gonna just speed through this. Set self expansion. This room, Konohea. Anata wa naze kono mura ni iru no? So you go back to that sentence. Anata wa naze kono mura. This village. Um, this village near so again konomura not koremura konomura if it was sonomura it would be why did you why are you in that village anata wa nase sonomura ni iru no um uh, which village are you in anata wa nase donomura ni iru no i guess in a logical sense that would be used logically theoretically um anoko which would mean that child over there, which the mother is using to describe her foster daughter. Again, in this case, the anoko is not kind of distancing herself from the child. It's just, it's it's used often. It might be used just by someone to refer to their child, that child, to. In this case, she's talking about her to somebody else, the anoko, so that child. So it's it's not used to say, oh, that child is far away from me, but it's kind of used with other people to say anoko, that child. Um, and, um, again, we got some here. So, 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 so in this case, she says "sono mama koide," which is "mama" means just as it is. So keep doing what you were doing. Is saying, keep going in that way that you're doing it. In that case, she's referring to the boat or kogu rowing the boat. So um, again, you can use this to say as it is. Tenki ga kono mama suzuku to ii desu ne. So kono mama is saying, I hope the weather is good. Weather. Tenki to be as it is, kono mama to stay as it is. So it's saying in this way, sono mama keep going in that way. So keep rowing in the way that you were doing it. So that's a good way to say, do it as you were doing it before, as it is. Sono mama koide. Um, now we've got konna, sonna, donna, and anna, which is like this sort of. Um, so here. 
えー、っと何これ So you got でもどうしてこんな田舎に来たの So こんな is like this sort of town 田舎 is well this sort of 田舎 is countryside こんな田舎 So why'd you come to this countryside? Um, again here こんな時間にそうよこんな時間に At this time? She's just come in the boat and she's and the man is like No te no te picnic yo Let's go have a picnic So こんな時間に At this time? Picnic? Uh, えっと here まさかそんなこと、so、まさかそんなこと、so, so, In this case, it's like, sonna koto is like that sort of thing. So, masaka is like, there's no way that so you did that. So, it's saying, masaka sonna koto, there's no way that you did sonna koto, or you did or you did or said that, or whatever. In that way,、um, this mother's saying, you called my do- daughter、um, futta buta, which is like, futta buta, which is like what we said, fat pig. So the woman is referring to There's no way. Masaka so no koto.、Um, so there's no way that she would have said that sort of thing.、Um, so, so, no koto de. so you can see in different sentences, so、no、koto, which means this as a whole because me, means that thing. So, so、no、koto, that thing. Don't say it. Don't say such a thing.、Um, so、no Don't say that. Such a thing as that. Don't say. Anna yatsu no koto wa mo wasurero. Wasurero. O wasuretara. O wasurero.、Um, forget about that guy already. Again, yatsu is like a, just an informal way of referring to a、um, person. Could be like just really informally or derogatorily. Derogatorily. So, which is kind of, kind of rude. Anna yatsu. So, if there's someone crying over a breakup and you have the friend Tomodachi,、um, your friend says, Anna yatsu no koto wa mo w a s u r e r o We'll forget about that guy already. So, you would say, Anna, which is referring to that guy over there, that, you know, it's not quite that sort of guy, but forget about that guy, Anna, over there.、Um, Here, konna ni taksan no hito ni kite i t a d a k e t e u r e s h i i des. You break this up. Konna ni is like this sort of. Taksan no hito means so many people. So that this many people came, came, kite, kuru. i t a d a k e t e So kite i t a d a k e t e is a、um, quite formal way of saying. People came. Ureshi des. I'm happy that people came. So, this, I'm k o n n a ni, I'm happy that so many people came. So, this many people, konna, this, anna, a, that over there, sonna, that sort of thing. So, it's kind of saying a sort of thing. In this case, the anna, it's more, it is not really that sort of thing, but it's more saying that person, but it's kind of saying it in. Anna yatsu, that sort of person or that person.、Um, it, you would probably say Anna yatsu rather than Ano yatsu.、Um, in either one, you could possibly use in this situation. But in this situation, it's like, so that this much people came, I'm happy. Or that sort of thing, don't say.、Um, again, we got ko, so, do.、Um, Oiwa-san is the people that she's saying with. Toko no seikatsu, life. Kono seikatsu wa do na no. So do is like, how is it? In this case, in this one, it's watashi mo so. Watashi mo so motte ta. So means that. So watashi mo is like, I also thought that sort of thing. Whereas this is, how is it? How is that sort of thing? So again, you've got the core, which would mean this sort of thing. So, which is that sort of thing. So you can say, so m o t t a to say, oh, I thought that too. So, more, yo. I thought that as well. Or,、uh, 
um, dorm or to say what do you think so those are kind of set phrases and you can see how course or door would be used in all those contexts um, again you've got these sentences um, which we just went over and that's why it's got koko ni iru no um, zutto koko ni etc um, are wa nan desu ka um, asoko no uh, to asoko no kanbotsu asoko no kanbotsu so it's like saying that over there um, it could be ano kanbotsu but for some reason in the sentence he says asoko no kanbotsu which is like that over there um, pothole amada naoshite nakatta no ka so you've got that over there location thing whereas this is are that over there this is saying that location over there at that location over there the pothole at that location so in this one the reason why he's not saying ano um, kanbotsu is because he's saying he's just drove over in this case he's drove over a pothole the, the, the driver and like he's referring to that location and the pothole at that location so it's not Ano kanbotsu, which would be that pothole over there, is like saying asako no kanbotsu, which is saying that po that over there in that location, that pothole, mada naoshite nakatta no ka. They still haven't finished, bit fixed that. So, um, we can just go through sort of things. Kono hito, so, kono hito so yu hanashi suki nai yo. So, so yu. Again, we've got koyu and soyu and doyu. Again, in this soyu hanashi, hanashi means story. Um, as you can see, hanashi is story. Soyu means that sort of story. Remember, so is that soyu hanashi. Kono hito, this person. Those kind of stories. Soyu is similar to sonna. Koyu is similar to konna. Um, suki no yo. Uh, and then sono ko that go watashi wo shitteru ko ni mitteru mitteru is like similar from miru so sono ko that person which is in this case what we've got with kono kore and sono sore is that the lady that is saying you remind me of a girl that I know um what is sonoko so the, the girl is that girl that i know sonoko um, um so it's like saying that girl over there so that's how it's kind of used as konoko would be this girl um you remind me of this girl that i know which would be more in a close proximity uh do you koto would be what do you mean do you koto um so I can just you can just see the examples here. Kono kaban this bag sore wa katte Can I buy that? Um, that's not meant to have. It's just meant to be asoko ni sundeiru. Asoko in the ignore that ko. Asoko ni sundeiru. I live over there. Koyu soyu doyu doyu ni. What do you mean by that? So that sort of thing, this is location, this is thing, this is belonging to something, kono kaban. Um, konna, sonna, donna, it's kind of abstract. Gomen nasai, sonna tsumori wa nakatta, which is like, uh, gomen nasai, that sort of thing, intention, tsumori wa nakatta. Okay. How was, <laughs> did that make sense? So basically, ko, when it's got kono or kore, it's this. Sore or sono, etc. is that. Um, are or ano or asoko is that over there, away. And doko and dore and dono is like where or which or that asking a question sort of thing. So it's do, the door is more abstract.
So, just see if you understood that. Yeah, cool. That 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 was clear. Um, and yeah, it, it probably take you um, some time to go through them, um, but that's cool. Um, so here we've got some omo and kangaeru. So omo is used to convey someone's thoughts, whereas kangaeru is to say one is thinking about something. So here, which is sentence with the so I thought that too. Whereas here, so this is saying you think about like a way of some medical treatment. You should think about this um You should think about medical treatment. So that's the difference. Kangaeru is thinking about something, or more is more saying that's what I thought. In, I'll show you some examples of um, some other how to kind of see the difference between Omo and Kangaeru. So again, she's asking Anna, Domo, what do you think? Um, whereas if you were like saying, um, what are you thinking of? Nani um, wo um, You'd probably be saying, um, what are you thinking about? Would be nani wo kangaeru. Is Domo um, is like, what are you thinking of? Not what you're thinking about. So there's just a slight difference. Um, again, <laughs> um, words of positive words, um, not very good English, but you could see here we've got kawaii. Oh. Kawaii, which means cute, which is more beautiful. We've got. Maraiko is more like adopted child. Um, so here, watashi wa anata ga. Um, so I, as for I, you, the um, subject, you, I'm jealous. Urayamashi. Um, anato maraiko de shiawase da tomo. So again, I think. I would have been happy, shiawase, which is happy, if I was um, adopted. Um, yeah. So that's what we've got. Um, so you can see shiawase, urayama, she, some more adjectives. Um, so we're just building vocabulary with adjectives at the moment. Um, this de is more saying as um it's a particle is saying as an adopted child anato um oh you oh no it's saying you anato moraiko de so you is moraiko being an adopted child as being a mora um, adopted child shiawase must have um is seems happy i think tomo um, usually tomo is usually referring to the person speaking um, so in that case it's mommy that's saying tomo yeah. um, here Ureshi, which means she's glad um, a lot of these adjectives you can just say by itself Ureshi. I'm glad, or kawaii, cute, or urayamashi, which is jealous. Um, you'll notice that I've used kaku. There's two kaku um, kanji, which are both written as kaku, but the first kanji more refers to drawing, which she's got a noto, a notepad. Um, but the second kanji refers to more like writing. So they're both the same kaku, which you won't notice in speech, but when you're writing, you can see there's different uses between the kaku. Um, again, some more adjectives. Okay, so okashi, which is strange, steki, which is pretty, um, and then we've got here. 
無事に着きました。とてもいいところです。おじさんおばさんもとても親切です。Okay, so you got k i m o c h i which is like good feeling. So k i m o c h i is feeling, e is good. And you pronounce this kimochi, kimochi, kimochi.、Um, then you got some other adjectives.、Um, so o j i s a n t o o b a s a n w a So, uncle and auntie, oji san is uncle, oba san is auntie wa. Totemo shinsetsu desu. So, you got the very、um, here, very totemo i tokoro, totemo i, very good, very shinsetsu, which is nice. So, very kind, very nice, kind people. Buji ni tsukite mashita, tsukite mashita, buji ni tsukite mashita. Which means, um, b u j i n i is safe and sound, safely. And s u i t a m a s h i t a is like, I've arrived there. So, I've arrived there, safe and sound. Totemo i tokoro desu. So, tokoro is place. So, totemo i, it's very nice.、Um, totemo shinsetsu, very kind.、Um, again, the topic here is ochi san to oba san.、Um, again, here, just coming back to this sentence. You got tomo, tomo teru,、um, present progressive, again,、um, saying that you thought this before and you're thinking this now. Ah, okashi na ie da na tomo teru de shou. You thought. So it's saying you must have thought that.、Um, yeah. And we've got more adjectives. Oh, kantan yo. Kantan yo.、Um, Which is kantan, which is easy, and. Honto ni tanoshi no! Honto ni tanoshi, which is、um, very fun. Honto, so you say honto quite a lot. Honto means very tanoshi, which is fun.、Um, and you can see at the end of these sentences, you can say kantan des to say it's easy if you're being polite. Oh, kore wa kantan des yo. So this is quite easy. Or you can say kantan yo or kantan da yo. Say it's easy,、um, but that yo at the end is just kind of saying、um, it's kind of using informal sentences a lot. So, if you're going to say, like,、um, like for example, kore wa kantan da yo, or kore wa, ka, kore wa kantan des, to make that more、um, informal, you can say da yo kantan, kore wa kantan da yo.、Um, you wouldn't say kore wa kantan da. You did say that was like、um, the informal version of this, but if you use that, it sounds like you're making a statement. Kore wa kantan da! Which is a bit more quite, it can sound a bit dramatic, so that yo kind of softens the tone.、Um, and in this case, I've just used it by itself. Honto ni tanoshi yo.、Um, but each of these adjectives that I've shown come under two categories, which is e adjectives and na adjectives. Now, The difference between them is, as you can see, the e adjectives all end with an e hiragana, whereas the na adjectives don't. And that's the basic difference. So, when you're going to describe、um, a, uh, a noun with an e adjective, you would just use the word as it is and then you follow it with the noun. Tatoeba, kawaii neko desu yo. That's a really cute cat, kawaii neko. Whereas if you're going to say、um, what we had before, which was.、Um, no. Can we go back? Yep.、Yeah. Oh, okashi. No, actually, no, that's not a good example. Well, it is actually, because here, even though okashi is the adjective, they've taken the e and changed it to a na.、Um, this can be done sometimes. Like, if you're going to say o k i you can say o k i n a i e But what you're doing is getting rid of that i hiragana and change it to na. But you don't need to worry about that too much. The important thing is just to know that when you have i 
um, like kawaii, itsukushi, tanoshi, and you're adding a noun to this um, for the adjective to describe the noun following the adjective, you would include the e. But when you don't, like um, here, if you're going to say shin shinsetsu na ryoshin desu, so they're nice parents, shinsetsu would be followed by a na hiragana and then you follow the noun afterwards. So when you're using a na adjective, which is defined by an adjective that doesn't have an e at the end, then you would um, use na hiragana between the adjective and the noun. Okay, so we'll just see how much we've got. It's a lot today. <laughs> so we've got this just quickly, kigasuru, kinisuru. No yashiki, shitteru kigasuru. So kigasuru is like, I feel like I've got a feeling, kigasuru. Um, whereas kininaru. Kinisuru janayo. Kinisuru. I meant to say kinisuru. Um, kininaru also means to worry or to be, you feel worried. But kinisuru is like saying, don't worry about that. Um, in this case, kinisurun janayo. So, kinisurun, suru, worry, don't worry. Kinisurun janayo. Kinisurun janayo. Don't worry about that. Whereas this is, kigasuru is like, shitteru. I feel like I, shitteru. I feel like I know this yashiki. Yashiki is mansion. Um, yashiki. So, these are usually used at the end of sentences. So if you were going to say this as a whole sentence, you should say, for example, um, maybe the fact that you called her a um, futabuta, futchabuta, um, kinisurun jana. So, um, so futchabuta wite kinisurun jana. Don't worry about the fact that you said that. Um, and here you got mottekuru and sureru. So the difference between the two is here. Anna chan no kaban mottekimashita. So kaban no mottekimashita. We bought the bag. Whereas here is. Sa! Tsuretekite chodai! She wants Anna to come out the house and explain why she called her daughter a fat pig. Um, so you're saying to tsurete kite, you're saying to bring a person, whereas motte kimashita or motte kuru is saying you're bringing an object. So again, in terms of bringing an object, juice to cookie or motte kitawa. Juice to cookie or motte kitawa. I bought juice and cookies um, because we bought objects, so we're going to use motte kuru. Um, we got some polite stuff here. Um, so more vocabulary. Um, so we got or and go, which are used at the beginning of words as honorifics to express politeness. So if you're going to say go shushin wa, go shushin wa, like would be where do you live? So shushin means like location, and then we got the wa particle after. Um, like, like I think we might have said this in first lesson, but when you're asking a question, you can just say, um, you don't have to say, Go shushin wa doko desu ka? You could just say, Go shushin wa? And that could be like suggesting, implying that you're asking, Where do you live? But that go is just extra politeness. Um, o cha, again, you got the o in the front. O hashi, which is chopsticks, you got the o at the front. So it's just extra politeness. Um, so. Sasaki Anna desu. Ko meiwaku o kakeru kamo shiremasen ga, shibaraku o sema ni narimasu. So, we've got the go meiwaku o kakeru. So, it's like, I'm gonna make cause trouble. Um, kamo shiremasen, which is like, kamo shiremai, which means maybe. So, cause trouble, maybe. Na, which is but. This ga is but, not the ga article that we've been learning. Um, so the reason why we know that that ga breaks up a sentence so ko meiwa ko kakeru kamo shiremasen ga 
and any currents in the Shibaraku Osewa ni narimasu. Um, so I'm grateful, so Osewa ni nari, I'm grateful you're taking care of me. Um, again, some sort of quick polite phrases. When you're entering, so entering someone else's house, um, or you invite someone's house, you usually say ojamashimas to say that you're entering someone's house um, as politeness. Uh, Jama literally means to be a um, trouble. So ojamashimas is saying literally I'm trouble but you're just saying sorry for troubling because I'm coming into your house so it's just a polite phrase to use when you're entering someone's house <laughs> and she's saying zen zen kamaimasen so kamaimasen means don't mind again what we zen zen means not at all so zen zen kamaimasen I don't mind at all um, got this sentence again. So, Kuruma no te, Honboro de Mosia Genaigeta. Got Honboro, by the way, which I didn't mention last time. Sorry, it's kind of an old, kind of scrappy. She's, he's referring to his car being a bit of a wreckage. Mosia Kenai is like, I'm sorry, I apologize. Which you usually might have if, um, in a polite situation, if you're having a phone call and um, the operator system you're trying to book for example holiday flights and then the person that, who's trying to help you book the holiday flights and the company might say on the phone ah moshiwake gozaimasen desu ka like I'm sorry but we haven't got any flights available um, so moshiwake gozaimasen is a polite way of saying sorry um, again gozaimasen it's used in very polite situations but you wouldn't use it all the time, um, so just be careful with that. Um, and then we've got again this sentence we looked at. Is just a nice way of saying I'm grateful for something. Um, we'll probably skip this because we just looked through that, so we've got that. And my desk on there, what could um, but you literally got a different way I put insert dog in video because I was going to be like look I'll insert the dog in video because she he has different ways of saying um, no but um, you can see that there's different ways of saying yes and no ie or hai those are simple ways of saying no yes but usually in Japanese because it's a very vague language you wouldn't really directly say ie or hai Unless you're in formal situations, but you can say other things such as "kekko uh, des" to say, you know, no, thank you, or "so des," hi, yeah, yeah, um, I agree, or "machiron," of course, or "daijoubu." You could say "chigao uh, chigao," which means no, that's not it, um, that's you're wrong. "Chigao desu yo," um, yo. Um, you could say "chotto chotto," which is like. Um, uh, it's like saying unfortunately it's a bit difficult um, for example if you're going to a shopkeeper and you're asking um, have you got any um, I don't know uni, have you got any milk uh, you say it's a bit you're saying no but it's like avoiding Directly saying no, we don't have it, which is more natural to say in Japanese to say words that are more um, a bit not as direct rather than saying uh, ie to that answer, it would be a bit direct and a bit rude. So, chotto is like a, a way of saying, mm, unfortunately, we don't. Um, again, we can just see some examples of polite. Um, Phrases that we've just said, such as "moshuake uh, arimasen," "moshuake gozaimasen," "komen nasai arigato gozaimas," "yoroshiku anegaishimas," which is like "nice to meet you," um, "ojomashimas," and so on. Um, and I think this is we're getting close to the end. Yeah, <laughs> it's been a long it's been a long session today. Um, yeah. 
So quickly, the tort and yat particle is just used for a complete list of nouns. Um, no, tort is used for a complete list of nouns. Yat is used for an incomplete list of nouns. So here we've got tort. So we're saying I bought some juice, I bought some cookies. So if she said I bought juice, cookies, and some more stuff, she would use juice to ya cookie ya or juice ya cookie or more So like I bought some cookies, some juice, I bought some other sweets or apples and stuff. But saying tort is saying she bought just some juice and cookies. Um, again here. So again, like I said, we go shushinwa, which is saying, where do you live? Otosanto wa. You're asking about, Otosanto okasan wa do desu Like, how are your mom and dad? But you don't have to say the thing that follows wa. You just bring in the topic, using the topic particle to say Otosanto okasan wa. So what about your mom and dad? How are they? Um, whereas here we've got the... So we're talking about taught, which is specifically mom and dad. Whereas here we've got... Um, so papa, mama, papa ya, mama ya, takusan no tomodachi ga kite. So we've got the ya. Yeah. So, mom, dad, all their friends, probably some more people as well. Um, so that yeah is using for a complete set of nouns. But we're only using yeah and top for listing nouns and not verbs. A different conjugation is used for verbs. Um, so we only use taught and yeah for verbs. That's important. Sorry, taught and yeah for nouns. <laughs> We use taught and yet for nouns, that's important. Only for nouns. Um, I think I'll skip this because we just it was just a transcription of some dialogue, which we've kind of gone through throughout the um, pretty much throughout the um, lesson. Mo most of this dialogue, like Kokui Tashiga Hai, and after more Eokakeru, Yujo to Totomo i Kodatta. Um, yeah, so when we say so, by the way, and when we're looking at like do mo and so mo imashita, when we're saying so by itself, like so this, it's more saying like yeah, yeah, it's more so is something that you say in agreeing with something rather than referring to a specific that or this, like we looked at with like. So more and do more. So when you say ah saw this, hi saw this, it's like yeah that's it, that's right. Um. So we just skip through some of this. Um. So there's a few um vocabulary words here as well that you can see. Um. And so on and so forth. That's the kanji for steki, which we looked at earlier. Steki, which means pretty. The reason why I put hiragana before is the kanji is quite complicated, as you can see. But um, yeah. So I think that's that's pretty much it. 